Hey guys, Anxiety and Art here. So, my style is pretty well developed, though it still needs some developing. As I thought of the properties of my style, I also realized how many other artists inspired my style. I'll tell you some general rules of them for portray portraying my style. But first, I'll tell you about some people who inspired my style. I think the art style that I'm most inspired by is Lavender Town style. If you don't know her, she is an art YouTuber who does story times and other types of art videos on YouTube. Her faces are generally rounded. They have large and expressive eyes and smaller noses and mostly small mouths. Her bodies are very differentiating types, but they are mostly in a short and thick body style. An example of that is Planchette from her comic Unfamiliar. She also does rubber hose arms. Out of her style, I was most inspired to use large eyes to express more emotion. I used to use rubber hose style, but I leaned more to drawing arms with joints and hands with more fingers to express more. I also do mostly thicker bodies. Another art style that inspired my art for a bit was anima anime. I don't think I have really any anime inspired my art at the current moment, but about a year or two ago, my art had a very classic, obviously not good at art, but it's drawing anime look. I drew with a top eyeline and a bottom eyeline. I also drew very sharp jawlines for like every character. Something from anime that still sticks in my style are like the half mouths. That's the word that I'm describing them because it's when the mouth is closed but there's like a part in the middle. I might have done that style of mouth before I got into anime, but I don't know if I even drew before I watched anime, so maybe not. Another small thing that inspired my art is heart mouths, which is in anime. When I first saw this style of mouths, I wanted to see how good it would look in my art, and then it became a pretty iconic part of my style. I first saw the style of mouth from Yurei and Ice when it was around its, its peak when it came out. Anyway, after that, let's analyze the general things about my style. My face is rounded with that iconic chibi bump at the bottom of the face. My eyes are usually large and have an enclosed eyeline, so they're, it's not like anime's eyelines. Noses are small or along with mouths, unless they're open and exaggerated, like heart mouths are. Necks are generally short, but visible. I've been drawing them a bit bigger recently. The shoulder span is a bit larger than the head width, because I thought it would look good proportionally. Um, arms usually have a joint where the elbow hypothetically is. In hands, the index finger and the pinky finger are separated from other hand expressions, aside from a certain few. The middle and the ring finger are joined together to create an easier way of drawing hands, and I think, so, I think it looks good. The thumb is in the middle of the palm, and the fingers are kind of chubby, so they're not too skinny and creepy. For most of... For the most part, bodies are an hour shape. Though I try to differentiate body type for guys, but I don't know how successful it is. When I draw legs, I usually have thick upper thighs. For lower thighs, they're small bumps, like, like human legs are like. I usually don't draw shoes and feet, but I I do when I do full bodies. So feet are kind of like blobs in my style. When I wear Whenever I draw them barefoot, what I've done once, I draw them with a line separating the toes. 
I also try to change the appearance of shoes and foot size according to the, according to the direction of where the foot is like pointing and rested on the ground. Let's go to coloration. For colors, I try to use the same types of colors or colors that pop. For some feel, I have a blush layer above the color. I use a red with an airbrush. I put blush on the cheeks, nose, shoulders, elbows, and knees to bring life to the picture. For shading, I use a hard cell shading. If you don't know what that is, please Google, because that's what's for. But for it, I usually use a French gray, depending on the color of light or atmosphere, on a multiply layer above the blush and color layer. For line art, I, cl I color the lines with a darker shade of the area of the shading. It's closed in with a clipping layer above the line art, so it only colors the line art and not the other parts. For hair shine, I put it underneath the line art. I color a portion of the hair with a about pure white. Then I use a Gaussian blur uh, on either the bottom or just in general to make it harder for people to re remove my watermark and because I think it looks good not being a solid white or shaded. Then the opacity is turned down depending on the darkness of the hair. For darker hair, it's usually really low. For lighter hair, since it's harder to see, it's a bit uh, less opaque, uh, transparent, not there. For eye shines, I just put a big white oval slash circle between the eye and the whites of the eye. When I sign a picture, I just use my name. If you look at the picture, you can really know what my name is. I sign it in cursive and put it over the face and hair to make it difficult to remove my name. I turn it to a low opacity so it doesn't fully ruin the picture, but it's still there and you can know who drew it. Anyways, I hope that was entertaining or something. Well, if you want to support my content, you can subscribe or leave a like. You can also leave a nice comment or suggestion for a future video. But after all that, I'll see you in the next video. Bye! Thank you.